Hey everyone, I'm Jordan Hernandez. This is Just Start Podcast, and we're here today with Ron Black from Lanzetta's down here in South Florida, Delray Beach. Uh, I just got a fresh fade, if you couldn't tell. My boy Ron hooked me up. Uh, he's barber and businessman uh, coming from North Carolina, and we're really excited to have you here today. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah, man. Pleasure haircut, to be here. The haircut was good, dude. It was very good. What? Uh, so walk me through it. Like, What led you uh, to get into the barber business? Man, it was something I always did. It's kind of a hobby growing up. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd cut like friends of mine's hair or, believe it or not, I had a beard growing up, like, you know, high school, coming into high school. So I always In had high like, a little chin strap or something going oh, okay. on. Okay. <laughs> Guys would see, like, man, Ron, you think you could line me up? I'm like, yeah, let's give it a shot. And then yeah. I kind of just was always something that was on the back burner that I felt like, you know, I knew I could do. Yeah. But I didn't actually go to barber school until I moved to Florida. Oh, wow. So that was, uh, yeah, your early yeah, 20s like, then. Yeah, it was uh, It was just like a little sidebar hobby that, you know, I didn't even charge people for it. It was just like I wanted to improve. Yeah. And then I had always done sales. Okay. So I, talking to people, I just got tired of selling people something. Yeah. I wanted to continue the conversations and barbering actually became relaxing to me. It was more natural. Really? Really? So sales sounds like it was stressful. And, uh, a little bit. It can be. Yeah. Yeah. Always trying to pitch and <laughs> Exactly. At least now, if anything, I'm selling myself. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, what, do, what do you like about being a barber? Ah, it's very relaxing. Like I said, um, interacting with people, mm -hmm. you know, as a barber, we wear many different hats. I could be somebody's best friend, their therapist. Um, mm -hmm. I could be that guy to just give you advice. If you want to talk sports or just some people just like the experience mm -hmm. and it made me feel good making other people feel good. Yeah. And I found a personal joy in it that if I can give that to somebody else and I can help them out with something they're working on, yeah. you know, you I, you have no idea how many guys, oh, I got a job interview. I feel like pressure's on. Mm. And I get somebody that comes back to me like, man, you know what? I feel like I got that job because of you. Like the haircut was wow. great. And, you know, it makes somebody feel good about themselves. If you feel good, you do good. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a good business model. Uh, for the most part. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. I mean, I mean, whenever I go in, I feel like I could just talk to you about movies, the game that was on last night, or, um, man, I know it sounds weird, but even like, uh, dude, I'm kind of in a funk right now. Like, you know. Exactly. And I'm here for all that. You know, yeah. we build a relationship in a sense mm. to where it's not just a client and a businessman it becomes more than that you you get to know people personal details you become friends after all yeah which i think is an amazing thing mm -hmm. i heard it not too long ago i was asking somebody about you know like just the community in general they're like man you know there's unity and community and being a barber has kind of shown me that mm -hmm. where you know you take care of people they're taking care of you those yeah. that come and support me in my business i will come back tenfold and show them the same you know it's supporting those that support you and i think it's awesome yeah. it's about bringing people together yeah that's really neat i like that uh unity uh in community i know like as a teacher it's it's all community based right you get to know not just the kids you know their their families maybe sometimes their pets you know true indeed. um you know i've, I've met kids uh to, to tutor or kids that were in the hospital um and it's really cool because kids are really like I think it started a couple of years ago where barbers were like cool getting haircuts were like really cool fades and oh, it's yeah. like a culture you yeah, know? It's become that. I mean, as a kid growing up, a barbershop was the staple of a community. Yeah. Me and my father, it was a tradition. Every Sunday, me and him would be in the barbershop getting our hair cut. Mm. And I mean, you'd hear them cracking jokes, talking about politics, anything. Yeah. You know, sports, politics, movies. It's where you've got a lot of information from. Was yeah. just being at your local barbershop. And mm. it feels good to be a part of that in a sense. Mm. Like, but now, like, I get to be on the other side of it, the behind the scenes, and just, like I said, build with people and yeah, go from there. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, what's interesting about Lanzetta is where you work here in uh, Delray Beach is I, I feel like it's very diverse. I think uh, between the barbers themselves, right, with the different ethnicities that are there, the different walks of life, even the clientele and the people that come in, which I thought was, uh, I thought that was really cool. Everybody needs a haircut, all walks of life, you know? Yeah. You want to be presentable, be well groomed. Why not? You know, right? And it's different. It's different than the other worlds, like the salon world or anything like that. You know, because it's just like you're not in and out of there. It's mm -hmm. we're having time. We're spending time together. I feel like it's where men can go to bond. Yeah. You know, it's 
it's a community in its own. Yeah, yeah, it is. I like the community vibe and the, like you said, the culture. You and your dad went and all walks of life are in there. Different generations too, mind you. Oh yeah, I mean, it goes back to, I'll say like the beginning, you know, yeah. you've got, during the Egyptian times, the barber was buried in the pyramids with the Pharaoh. Yeah, yeah. Like, so it makes me feel good. There's a prestige that goes along There's with it. There's a prestige. <laughs> yeah, man, you're making people look good, you know, which is awesome. And along the way, you're doing life with them a little bit. You know, you're getting to know them on a certain level and you're kind of helping them out. Um, like you said, it's kind of like therapy. Yeah, I've been there for people's successes, people's, you know, tumbles. And, you know, have maybe even from what I've been told by a few people help and inspire them to build themselves back up or wow. realize there's, you know, tap into their potential. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. It's just conversation. Somebody, sometimes that's all you need is somebody just maybe a little guidance or somebody giving mm -hmm. you their own personal experience. So yeah. I'm happy I've done that with quite a few people, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, are, are there any like cool little stories or anecdotes or memories that um, come to mind in regard to like anything like that? There's so many multiple stories from, like I know people that have, have lost one opportunity, but we've mm -hmm. sat down and talked and yeah kind of giving that encouragement like this isn't the end of the road for you it's a speed bump but yep. you know there's more to it than this maybe this door was closed because another one opened and it's about mm -hmm. finding other opportunities things yeah. like that yeah oh, almost to a sense like I've, I've motivated a few people from what i've been talking about it makes me feel good or yeah. even uh in my own life childhood friends of mine they'll see me and my success of just being a barber and yeah. like wow you know like you really went ahead and did something different, went against the grain and made your own life. And right. That makes me feel good, you know, in yeah. a sense, because people go through so much in life mm. that you do need an outlet. Being a barber, yeah. I can be that outlet. Right. You know, that little 30 minutes with me may change somebody's whole outlook and make them feel better for, you know, months, years on end. Yeah, yeah. And what's funny is this isn't no feel good. This is actually true in practice because I've seen you interact with clients. I've seen how you've even interacted with me when I barely knew you. And it was kind of like, I don't know how this sounds, but when I first met you, I kind of kept coming back to you because I felt like I knew you already. Like you sat me down, we talked, we talked about movies, we talked about music. Then we started getting into like some philosophy stuff. And I'm like, how did this all go down in 40 minutes? And uh, I think there's something that draws people to you. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, me and my buddy used to have a saying, like, he, he used to tease me. He's like, man, you got 99 charisma points. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, you know, the game won't let you have 100. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's true. I mean, so maybe with, like, me being that kind of person, you know, like, I, I try to be very easy to talk to. Yeah. Yeah. Build a sense of comfortability there, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's that's what I want, you know? Yeah. I want you to know, like, we're building a relationship. Right. It's, yeah. It's more than a haircut, you know? It's true. Now, because you're like, you're a barber and you're a business-minded person. You've gone into a few different avenues and researched different multiple, uh, you know, job opportunities. And um, we only have so much time here. But what's your philosophy with like running a business and, and putting, you said to me earlier, like relationship at the core of it? Because you have to support the people that support you in a sense. Mm. Um, with any good business, keep business business. Mm-hmm. I mean, personal is off to the side, mm -hmm. but you do have to have personal relationships with people. I mean, like I wouldn't be who I am without your support, mm -hmm. without the support of the community. Right. You know, but my, and I guess you can say my give back in that situation is my skill set that not only do they walk away feeling good, looking good, but we may have had a conversation that may have turned on a light bulb in their head. Right. Which... You know, to me, that means more than anything else. You yeah, know? yeah. Just that giving part. Mm -hmm. But as far as the business goes, I mean, you have to have, you have to have that. You have to have people involved with you that see a value in what you do. Right. But you also have to create an experience that's worth that value for them. Yeah, hundred percent. Whether I, you know, to me, it's not just cutting hair. Whether you're in sales. Uh, you could be just a, a hedge fund manager. Mm -hmm. By the time you've spoke with somebody and you've implied customer service into that. Mm -hmm. There's so many more levels to that. You have to get to know somebody to actually provide them with better customer service. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I remember myself working sales jobs and going through, you know, the books of core values and what they wanted you to do. Mm -hmm. And 
if I'm trying to sell you something, my job is to find out about you. What are your wants, your needs, your lifestyle? Right. And then sell you something around that. Mm -hmm. At least in barbering, I don't have to sell you anything. Right. Like we're having a conversation. We're going through your needs and wants with your haircut. Yep. You're telling me about your lifestyle, you know, and sometimes I get in my head like I know you teach. So mm -hmm. therefore, OK, well, how do I picture, you know, a cool teacher's haircut? You yeah. Know? Like, like somebody <laughs> right. like to keep you professional, you yeah. know? Yeah. Your haircut may be different than the uh, 60 year old doctor that I cut or lawyer that I cut, you know? Right. Right. Because they want their self presented, you know, about upholding an image a certain way. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's my job to do that. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> No, and that's cool. I mean, I'm gonna honestly, we're gonna have to do a poll and see if I've gotten any cooler since knowing you with, uh, <laughs> with the high fade. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, you you've said it a couple times: community, unity, and community, and um, putting relationship first, getting to know people. Um, given the you know the coronavirus where we're at, um, you know, businesses are going to be opening up. And um, what have you experienced in the time away from um, you know work and away from I will say I've gotten more family time personally. Good. Because I, I I dedicate myself to my job. I work a lot. Yeah. So having the family time is nice. But then I've also found, you know, there's, there's a balance to it. Mm. And I mean, even dealing with people, I've got, my phone has not stopped blowing up. People do want their hair cut. <laughs> yeah. Bar barbers are essential. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, I mean, times... Times were hard. I feel like with coronavirus coming around, this is something nobody expected. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard to prepare for it. So yeah. my advice to people is just prepare the best you can in your life. Mm. You know, have have your savings, money to the side. I truly believe, my mother used to tell me as a kid growing up, mm -hmm. a rainy days are coming. Save. save. Yeah. There were times I didn't listen. Thank God I happened to listen a little bit now mm -hmm. where I had enough to get me by to float me through until we can reopen. Good. Where, you know, there's people out there who weren't as fortunate. Right. Or people that lost jobs. Mm. And it's tough. It is. So, like we were talking about with unity and community, I've seen people in the community to reach out and start to open up and do more. Mm -hmm. You know, I've first-hand experience, um, like even just coming to Del Rey, there were people who... Mm -hmm. You know, would call me, even just messages, you included, just yeah. to see how I was doing. Yeah, yeah. And just that just that reaching out made me feel better, you yeah. know? Yeah, it's true. So I think everybody should do that. If you got people that are important to you in your life, like in a time like this, mm. reach out. I yeah. mean, even if there's friendships or connections that have been lost, reach out, say hi, just, hey, just checking on you. Yeah. That could make somebody's day who could be literally at this moment depressed. I know. That's a big thing, man. I've been seeing uh, some of my family members. I know when the, this this whole thing when it originally started, I was um, I was in a huge funk, um, definitely uh, depressed. I was sleeping in a ton. I was eating terrible, and um, all it took, I think, one day, I just I woke up and honestly, my wife was like, "Hey, you got to have like some type of goal or something here," you know? And exactly. It was it was tough. It was about I don't know. It was about ten days that I just was like <sighs> feeling gross. I feel like we were all in that same boat. Yeah. Because even me, I started sleeping in. You know, I'd wake up. I wouldn't even do my hair in the morning. I'm just going. Yeah, you're just going. And I looked in the mirror. I was like, man, you got to change something. Like, don't let this get the best of you. Right. So, you know, I put yourself together a list of goals for the day. Try to still accomplish things. Right. Because, yes, it's so easy to sit back on the couch and, oh, yeah, I'm just going to turn on Netflix and not do anything today. Yeah. Don't veg out. Mm -hmm. Either take some time to do something for your mind mm -hmm. or your body, I feel like, mm -hmm. or just something that makes you feel good. Right. Get up out of that bed. Make your bed. Just something simple like that. Make your bed. Mm -hmm. Accomplish one thing. Yeah. And that'll change your whole outlook. <laughs> yeah. You know? Because when you sit there and you just take on like, oh, yeah, I'm depressed. I'm just going to sit here and do this. It's like you don't feel good about yourself. No, you you're, don't. You'll start to gain weight. You yep. know, your looks will change. Like, oh, no, it's, right. not, it's not a happy place to be. No, not at you all. You could get sucked down a rabbit hole and yep. be terrible, feel it, terrible. It's so funny. I don't know about you, but like every time I got home from summer, uh, like college break, you know, summer vacation, winter break, it was usually over summer because I, you know, typically have like three months off. And... Um, what happens is after about a week or two where I'm used to waking up early and everything's automated, I start sleeping in a ton. And then I'm waking up sometimes at 8 a.m. Sometimes I'm waking up at 11. Uh, you've earned it. 
You've earned it. Yeah. <laughs> but like, and like, and so in the beginning, I'm like, oh, I earned it. Right. And also I'm going to be ordering like Burger Fi and Shake Shack. You know what I mean? And then we're watching like movies and shows. And then it's like, all right, we're not just watching like one or two movies. Like we're, we're watching an entire season in one night. And you know, like that all kind of builds. And then I'm like, man. I don't like the way I'm looking right now. I just saw a picture of myself. Like, whoo, oh, yeah. I got to start doing something. <laughs> well, in a sense, that all can be justified because, yes, like you said, you did earn it. Yeah. You know, that quality time. Exactly. That quality mm-hmm. time with your missus. Mm-hmm. That's stuff that you've missed out on by working mm. and doing other things. So, so, exactly. so take the blessings, but yeah. along with the other side, you can't get let yourself get off track from what your personal goals are. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's something I've been learning a lot. Like you said, wake up in the morning. What I find is like making your bed cleaning up because i'm not i'm not a very clean person you know like oh. i'll let the dishes go you know i'll, I'll let the bed just kind of like and eh, whatever like in college that was definitely a thing but then i i found that like as that continued to stay messy my life was also like reflecting it exactly you know i you are not the only one that's been there i find myself when i get in times i'll look i'm like oh man i lost control and really reorganize life mm-hmm there may be some new things that I figure out, some old things that I'll bring back that were there. Yeah. As far as, you know, even just getting up in the morning, I know when I get into a funk, I'll start to get up in the morning, make my bed. First thing I do. Yep. Then go in that bathroom, take care of myself, groom myself, get yep. clean, looking for the day. Mm-hmm. And then carry on about my day. Right. And from there, you know, just try to accomplish maybe one thing that day that I had been putting off. Right. To keep myself motivated during a time like this where it's so easy to lose motivation i know it and this time has been a blessing in the fact that damn i realized mm-hmm. it's not just this time of year that that can happen yeah live your life by it. just start doing those things it's take, true take the first step in a sense take the first step just start that's it just just start <laughs> like, just start it just yeah. start somewhere and it doesn't matter where you start you know right. just as long as you do start yeah you do and that's like we, we've talked about it before. It's like the first step even in recovery. Like just... True indeed. Opening up and addressing there's a problem here. I'm going to check myself in or I'm going to start talking about X, Y, Z. You know? Exactly. And self-realization, I feel like, is the biggest process to recovering from anything, whether it be depression, addiction, uh, things in life in general. You know, Trauma. Like, yeah, trauma. You know, find out. Be ready to take that first step and go. Yeah. Just start. You know, uh, I've been through some stuff personally and I'm like, mm. all right, well, I didn't, I didn't have the knowledge to handle it. I went to somebody that did. And that was the first step mm. in, you know, changing my thought process it, realizing like, you know, there is more to life. Yeah. Keep it going. Life is, a, life is an adventure. Live mm. it. Yep. Like I've got friends of mine that have been depressed. Even myself have been down, like. Just, I don't, I don't even necessarily say suicidal, but like to a thought like where I'm like, you know, would I be better off here, better off there? Like, you know, or how mm-hmm. would people around me be? And I'm like, for me personally, like I got in my head, I was like, man, it's crazy that you'd even think that way. Yeah. Like there is so much more to life. The way that sun shines and the, the warmth on your skin, there is a beauty in this world. Mm. Don't get sucked down with negativity. You are what you put out there. It's true. If you want to be positive, then put positive out there and it's going to mm-hmm. come back to you. Mm-hmm. I believe things come full circle and mm-hmm. if you just start somewhere, mm-hmm. progress will be made. Yeah. And it can change your entire outlook on life. Absolutely. You will wake up in the morning and just be happy. Like, all right, man, here's another day to try and be better than I was yesterday. Yeah. And for so many people out there, especially young people these days, they got it hard. Yeah. They've got one generation blaming everything on them. And then another generation is like, oh, they're just stupid. Like, yeah. These kids, I feel like they've got it figured out to the point they're experimenting. They're doing mm-hmm. more. Yeah. One thing that like I see is they're not conforming to society's standard. They are doing what they want to do mm-hmm. and becoming successful at it. Which, yeah. I mean, in business, think about it, man. The craziest ideas have launched people's careers. Like when people have told them like, oh, you're crazy, you're crazy. True. Crazy works. Crazy works. Live crazy your life, works. get that experience out there. Yeah. You know what? I've got a question for you. Rumor has it <laughs> that you used to do comedy. <laughs> <laughs> how, how was that for you? Like, you know, that's, that's kind of breaking one's ego and coming out like you're exposing yourself at that point. Comedy yeah. can get real personal. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, no one's ever really asked me that before, actually, um, from the personal side of things. It's funny, like, 
you know, I always had a fascination with the performer, you know, like mm-hmm. I remember I was, um, I went to a private school when I was real young. My, my, my parents are, um, my mom graduated high school. My dad, uh, um, he, he didn't finish high school. He went into the trade business. He comes from like an immigrant family situation. I that. And um, so he was a hard worker. And so he put me in private school for a couple of years where we can manage it as a family. Then I went public right after that because it's too difficult with three boys. And we all loved performing. We loved it. Okay. We made home videos. We did sketches. We'd have a little camcorder and we'd do stuff. But I remember never having the, um, I don't know, the grit and the, the, the confidence to actually audition for anything like school plays and stuff. I, w- I always saw that as like a, wow, I would love to do that one day. And then, um, yeah, man, in college, I finally did it. I always played sports growing up in high okay. school. Yeah. I never, per- I never performed per se, except for like being like we talked earlier, like being like the class clown. Oh yeah. Goofing oh, with your yeah. friends. Yeah, you, know? you feel relaxed. You get it in like that. Yeah. Then college, I finally just built up the courage to just do it. And I, I quit the the first audition. Quit. Tell me about it. How did that? How did that happen? I studied a, a comedy monologue. This is before like stand up or improv. Okay. I, I memorized a monologue. It was like a funny bit on this guy that had a tremendous fear of snakes, and he's talking about this his ex girlfriend and how uh, she was like a snake collector, and he was like freaking out the whole time about it. And it was a fun bit. And. Anyway, yeah, I went to my first audition as like an awkward 18 year old kid as a non-theater major. I just wanted to do it. Went in, I actually threw up. I was so nervous and I, I left. My roommate was like, oh, man. my roommate was like, how'd it go? I'm like, dude, I didn't do it. Oh man. <laughs> it was bad. Now what made you be inspired to come back and give it another shot? Because um, that, that had to take something because I mean, the first time, you know, like I can imagine that like being that nervous. Yeah. Took a whole year. I called my mom crying. I was just like, Ma, I couldn't do it. I'm so embarrassed. I'm going to see people like this again on campus. Like, they're going to know that I quit. This is ridiculous. Uh, and she was like, Jordan, it's okay. You got to do, and I said this before, you got to do what the other kids aren't doing. I can see that. I agree with that. Because that, I mean, that's a lot of pressure. You want to make yourself different from the crowd. Right, right. Um, so, anyway. I did. I started doing a bunch of different things. I, I dropped into some classes that I wasn't registered for just to listen to acting 101. I went into an improv class that I wasn't registered for and my buddy was in it and I started doing exercises with them. Improv is so hard. I believe it's so <laughs> hard. You go in with a room full of strangers who are talented actors and you're a funny guy. You're a personal guy, right? You go in and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, okay, you got to do this. Here's the scene. Here's your line. Here's the accent you have to have. And it's all in real time. And there's with an audience watching. Oh, wow. So I did it for so you- a couple of years and struggled. Some, some were so bad. Like I felt, you know, when you like hear yourself, you're like, oh, this is not going well. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've been there. I, like, I got to commend you for even like just trying. Mm. A lot of people won't start, you know, they'll let things keep them from even realizing there's any kind of potential there like yeah. self-doubt whatever it may be yeah and that's a lot of courage to just step mm. up and do something out of the normal for yourself yeah you know it's weird it's, it's a love hate thing i got so nervous before shows before like you know i did a series of maybe 12 or 14 shows of improv when in front of some smaller audiences sometimes like some bigger ones maybe a couple hundred people if you're lucky um and i'm telling you for the whole week, I had a knot in my stomach. I'd be going to work or going to class or even just going to dinner or something. Oh, I'd be like, oh, this is, yeah, you know, like all oh, Friday imagine. nights are right around the corner. I gotta, I gotta, uh, and then you do it, you get a rush, especially if it goes well. And you're like, man, I did it. That's awesome. I, all right, I'll let you in on a little information. Yeah. I used to be a musical performer in a sense. Oh, you said that. Okay. Uh, me and my buddies would get together. I mean, we do shows at local clubs, things mm. like that. And I remember before my first one, mm. it was just an open mic night. Yep. I, uh, one of my buddies went over there and just signed me up. He comes to Braun. Mm. I put you on the list. What? And I, in my head, I'm like, I'm not prepared. I'm not prepared. I'm not prepared. <laughs> like, what do I do? And... I'm going back. I'm checking the list. I think it was like 30 something people on the list. I'm like 27. Right. I kept going, checking, 
where am I at? Where am I at? And the closer it came to my name being called, my stomach was a knot. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm like, oh, excuse me. I think I gotta go to the bathroom yeah. or anything. Like, <laughs> just, I'm like, I need a second to myself. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I even tried, you know, pounding a drink here or there. Yep. You know, and I finally got to a point where, like, I gave myself a pep talk. I was like, you go out here and you do this. Yeah. And I did it. Honestly, there was no proud reaction. It couldn't have gone any worse. I don't think it could have gone any better than it did. Like, okay. it was just, all right, I did it. I did and, it. And, the relief that I felt from doing it and seeing that it wasn't that bad. Yeah. And, you know, you do have a few people there to support you. Yep. It was enough to make me feel good and, and, and pursue it a little bit more. Mm-hmm. So I can only imagine, like, with comedy, how hard that must be because, like, you're out there being relatable to people and yeah. everything. Like, wow. Yeah. No, and that's cool with me. See, I didn't really know that about the music thing until you brought it up earlier. Like, oh, I had man. no idea. I used to have some fun back in the yeah. day with it. Oh, man, you, you, you picture, man, it's a group of high school friends. Like, we wanted to be the next best thing. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you know, potential was there, but yeah. nobody pushed. I felt like we lacked motivation at that time. Yeah. We got too distracted by other facets of life. And, mm-hmm. I mean, had we pushed a little harder, who knows what would have happened? Man, the, the amount of effort and the doggedness that it takes to actually, like, you have to be just producing like crazy amounts but you have to do that in life in general that's yeah right yeah no matter what you do if if you if you teach if you act if if you're a farmer like you've always got to keep going and push yourself to the next level i yeah. mean don't don't conform yet quite right. yet you know don't get comfortable yeah and just be like oh this you know this is good yeah because like, you're always going to wonder what else is out there push yeah. it go to the next experience mm-hmm. it would feel good there's a self gratitude that comes with like knowing that you took that first step or that took the initiative to go after something. Mm-hmm. And I mean, if you get knocked back, if you get knocked down, okay, cool, yeah. you know, accept it, deal with it, and if it's something that you're passionate about, keep mm-hmm. going after it. Yeah, a lot of I see a lot of people like hope dreams die. Yeah, you know, they get distracted by life or stay away from it. Yeah, I'm like you know what, me being 34 going on 35, man. I'm like, man, there's more to life than this. And I know it. I've personally seen it. Yeah. So why not push forward and keep going forward? You know, little hobbies there. And even if I still can't go do that myself, like, I still try to inspire other people to do it. Like, man, you want to do it? Go for it. Go for it. Yeah. Like, it's a wonderful feeling. It really is. Um, And honestly, that's why you're such a great person and great at your business because, like, I think you get people to open up. You know, like try. You, you, well, you do. Like I, you, you talk about your shortcomings. That's one thing that surprised me about you when I first met you. You were very open about like things that you weren't thrilled with that you were working out. And I was like, Oh, Whoa. definitely, I definitely. Like, I was like, a guy that actually does that. You know, that's tough. I, I don't come across too many guys that are very open with their failures. Well, man, you know, I was raised by my father, who you know, great guy all in all. But like you never saw like really any emotion. Like mm. everything had to be this way. He had a very structured mind. Mm. And it wasn't until like I got older that I realized like, you know, I'm conforming to this bubble of mm-hmm. what people expect you to be. Yeah. Get to know yourself. Live your life how you want to live your life. Mm. Because when you get to know yourself, you find out things about yourself that you never knew. Yeah. Like I never knew that I was strong enough to go on stage and perform at yeah. that time. Like, it was scared the hell out of me. Uh, right. Now that I'm a barber, my first haircut, like, same bubbly gut feeling. Yeah. Like, oh, I hope I do good. Like, <laughs> you got to understand, there's going to be there's gonna be tumbles. I messed a whole lot of heads up before I got good. Yeah. So, it's just, it's about per- being persistent, mm-hmm. being consistent. Like, yeah. as long as you keep putting forth the effort, something yeah. good will come from it. Yeah, there's something to be said about failure. You know, I think um, I was always afraid of failing. So like I never I never took the step forward and I wanted to do it for like six, seven years. Like I really wanted to try my hand at comedy, stand up. I couldn't do improv. You know, we're talking about like community and stuff. Improv is really, really difficult and it, it breeds a lot of theater students who work well together. There's something cool to me about a one-sided conversation in like a narrative way, like for storytelling. So I'm like, oh, I like storytelling. Definitely. And I just started watching YouTube videos and I just started like putting it out. And for years, I was so afraid to do it of, you know, oh, what if they don't laugh at some of the jokes? What if they don't laugh at any of the jokes? What if this, what if that? What if they perceive me as that? I'm not gonna get on stage. And I didn't, I quit just like in theater and I quit. And then when I finally pulled the trigger and did it, I think I was 20 
I think I was 20 when I did my first open mic, 19 or 20. Um, I did it and there was 500 students there at an open mic at college. Oh man, 500. Yeah. That's a good crowd. I almost walked away. This is the second time and my buddy's like, you are not going away. And uh, That's a good friend. He was, a, yeah, a no, he's a, yeah, great dude. Great dude. I still talk to him to this day. Best friend, Matt Carrozza, Long Island. What's up, Matt? Um, but no, yeah, um, great friend and great crew. And I did it. I did it. I went up the first two jokes. I felt it. I was like, oh, and I, I felt nervous. My palms were sweating. It was like an Eminem song, oh, right? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> knees weak, arms are heavy. And uh, dude, I, I got through it. And not only got through it, I had to wait. There were a couple of laugh breaks where you're waiting because they're still laughing. And you're like, oh, man, did that make you feel good? It felt like this. Like it just it hit you like the laughter comes back and it hits you on stage. And you're like, wow. Now, was there like, did you feel like a weight was lifted off from the pressure of it all? Or like, <sighs> you know what it was like? Was it gratifying? Like when they started yeah. to laugh, did you it changed how you felt inside? You have no idea. It was like euphoric. You know, nice. like when you know when you see like Jimi Hendrix go into like some crazy solo, or you see like a, like a guy in an orchestra or something, and like he's just totally losing himself. Yeah, getting that trance like state. Yeah, you're just feeling it. It was that. Of course, in comedy, it's different because you're so hyper aware of the audience to like a fault. Oh you, yeah. You see the person filming you in the back corner. You see the guy right up front who's trying to talk to like a girl and impress her, and so he's not really paying attention to you, and it's almost kind of annoying you. So you have to put him in place, like because a comedian has to own the room, you know? Ah, true indeed, true indeed. Right, like with hecklers or people that are like distracting, or you know what I mean? So you you do that, and it's funny because like when you teach or lecture, you're doing the same thing. It's crowd management. Yeah. I never thought about it like that. Yeah. So no matter where I went, I always wanted to be an entertainer, but not like, I don't know. I always want to be an entertainer because like you, I like seeing the best version of people. Oh, yeah. I know that for some people that I meet that on the surface, they're not very enjoyable. They're kind of rude or you could tell there's damage. Oh, yeah. And man, I love getting it out of them where you start to see them like, open up or like oh yeah you know what i mean i definitely go through that like even today as a barber like mm. cutting hair i've got guys they just come in sit down get their hair cut they might tell me what they want no conversation i'm digging like mm. oh you know you like sports you know you watch tv at all you know yeah. have you seen anything interesting what do you do for work just that simple question what do you simple. do for work yeah and some people just don't want to talk about it like they're tough shells to crack yeah uh i ended up Funny, I ended up getting a message that popped up on my phone one day, and it's a girl. And the next thing you know, this guy that I'm cutting, like, hard shell to crack. He's like, oh, girls? I like girls. And he just starts <laughs> showing me everything in his phone, and we start talking. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. This is what it took to crack him. You right. Know? And it's... Mm. It was cool because now we've got we've expanded beyond that. You know, he's telling me what he does for work. He's telling about like life, how he grew up. Cool. You know, and he's like, you know, talks about his own personal issues. And we're like... It's weird because in a sense, I'm like, I wouldn't work through it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like, it's cool, man. It's like, yeah, it is. It's like therapy sessions. It is like therapy sessions because you might be the only person that they encounter who gives a crap. True indeed. True indeed. You know what and I mean? Some people are just looking for that, that pat on the back or that shoulder. Like even somebody just listen. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure like multiple people throughout their lives have gone through points in time. Like, you know, if I just had somebody to hear me out or like mm -hmm. even hear an idea, yeah. And go from there. Like, you know, I don't know if I should do this or not. Right. And that one person they talk to, well, what are you thinking about? Give me the idea. <laughs> Ends up turning into, you know, your next Microsoft, your Google, something. It's so you know? true. It's so true. You know, it's funny. Like, I was at, uh, I was at one of the colleges north of here. And uh, I was doing, like a, like, a roundtable discussion with some other, you know, professionals. Mental health stuff. Okay. And there were a lot of college kids in the audience. And so they were asking questions and... Um, you know, we even got some questions here from a few of the people that are following our podcast. And it's, it's the same question. And it's, um, you know, how do you, um, how do you become more self-aware? Like, like how, do, like, cause it's, it's always a question about healing. Like it's a question that, that is like getting to the root, right? Oh uh, yeah. Of in a what sense, you struggle you, with. In a sense, yes. You know, um, like for you, what is it, what does it look like to be self-aware? Oh, man, my journey for self-awareness, like I could probably take you back to like 18, 19 years old. Mm. I, 
I got in a sense, well, my word for it, well, I was I was soul searching. Yeah. You know, I grew up one way, but like I didn't necessarily want to conform to that. I always felt me personally, I was always felt like there was more, there's more, there's yeah. more. I mean me, a couple of my buddies were roommates. Mm-hmm. I mean, we had Jehovah Witnesses come by the house and we talked with them for hours, mm. two hours, you know, just bouncing ideas. I've sure. read you know, I've read the Quran, I've read, you know, the Holy Scriptures, I've read the Bible, just mm-hmm. jumping through different things. Sure. Trying to find myself. And they all kind of yeah. generally say the same thing, you know. Be be a good person pretty much. Mm-hmm. Well, my idea of a good person may not match this person's idea of a good person, but mm-hmm. I gotta follow and find that in me. Mm-hmm. Um, the Japanese have a thing where they say everybody wears three different faces. Mm. You've got one that you show the world, You've got one that you show close friends and family, and then you got one that you don't show anybody, your true self, like the guy that you look at in the mirror. Yeah. And in that, I feel like if you know or you're conscious of what you are doing Mm -hmm. and you go back and you find out, you know, I mean, for people with trauma, I'll say Mm -hmm. something that hurts you and you can pinpoint that thing, Mm. either you won't express it and dig yourself out of that hole or you'll suppress it and just not show it to anybody personally that may eat at you what do you do with that either help others from making the keep from making the same mistakes take your life experience with that and flip it into a positive where all right it's the past may you may not be able to do anything about it now mm-hmm. but if you know somebody going through a similar situation hey talk to them help them out push them to do better yeah uh, you know, there's a there's an untapped potential in all of us. I feel like we're all connected in some kind of way mm-hmm. to where we should do for others. One of the biggest things in life to pull yourself out of something that I feel like you get self-gratification from is helping other people. When you give somebody, you know, on the street, you give them a couple bucks or you give them a plate of food or you know somebody that's going through something, you just do something just to help them out. Right. Do you feel so gratified in a oh, sense? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I feel like that's what we as people are meant to do, mm-hmm. is is help each other, build build each other up, right. build your community. Mm-hmm. And there's a self-gratification that comes with that that makes you feel so good. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to self-awareness, be aware of the things that you're doing. Mm-hmm. But you have to care about it because there's yeah. certain things that I'm self-aware of that I'm like, oh, well, yeah, I could do this differently, but do I really care? Yeah, you know, I'm enjoying it. You mm-hmm. know, when the yeah. time's right, I'll change it. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> man, that was so good. Two things. Um, the, going back to the, the what the Japanese had said uh, with the three different types of faces. Mm-hmm. You know, I I, I remember um, uh, reading Hawthorne. He wrote uh, the Minister's Black Veil, and it was about this guy that put a black veil on as like a reminder to people that we all kind of walk around with our own veil. We it, do, and we don't really know who's inside of there. You know. Um, and it could be what we see as far as like on our Instagram and how we're living our best life here, you know? Oh but, yeah. But in real life, you may be going through some challenging things that you oh, don't present yeah. to the public. A hundred percent. I mean, I see Instagram stars that have, you know, died or committed suicide Yeah. because their life was not how they were portraying out there. Like the comedian Robin Williams. Right? Uh, like uh, Robin tortured Williams. Tortured artists that yes. bring joy to a lot of people. I've been seeing that a lot lately. Check on your friends that, that seem too happy sometimes. You know, mm. they they may be projecting that because I mean they want to be that happy. They're trying to keep others that happy when mm. themselves aren't that happy. Yeah. So definitely, like, look into that for people. Mental health is a big issue in the world that we're just really tapping into. Yeah. That you know, even children now, back in my day, oh, you know, uh, with the, uh, attention deficit disorder. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, it's just kids being kids. Uh, like now you find out like these kids may actually have a chemical imbalance. Right. That causes them to react a certain way. Absolutely. So, mm-hmm. You never know what somebody's truly going through. And it's good that like, you know, to ask questions. Yep. That'll help you out personally, you know, mm-hmm. in, in everybody's life. Ask questions. Find out more. The, the the quest for knowledge, and I don't care what kind of knowledge it is, should never stop. Right. Because I, I believe that's where you grow. Mm-hmm. That's where you find power. Like, it's empowering to find out things you didn't know about yourself. Mm-hmm. The courage to get on stage. Yeah. That kind of courage is is amazing. You know, mm-hmm. there's a lot of pressure when people are all focused. Like, oh, you know, what do you do? Yeah, yeah. You make you, know you or break you. And that's the thing with mental health. 
I'm so glad you said that word courage. That's something I've been mulling over a lot. And I'll never forget what I read the other day. I don't, I don't know if you, I know we talked a little about like your depression at one point being in a funk. Like I've just recently 28, 29, I'm now 30 kind of came to terms with, I struggle with anxiety Oh yeah. and I go through waves of depression. Right. And, um, it was funny because for so long I was trying to do things and have people just take away the anxiety. You know what I mean? Like I got to do this anxiety gone over, but that's not how it works. And no. I, I'll never forget. I, I, a psychologist, uh, he said to me, he's like, you don't just make somebody less anxious by taking things away that make them less anxious. Like, yeah, that could help for the time being, but he's like, you make that person just more courageous and battling it. I totally agree with that. I mean, I've been through a couple of things in my life where I've just been like down in the dumps. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm going through a divorce, mm. you know, and that it rocked my world to go through that. Yeah. But I'm finding that there's a lot more to myself. Mm -hmm. Like I am an, a wonderful father to my children, you yep. know, like in those times of anxiety, like I get to thinking like, am I being good enough? Am I being good enough for my kids? Am I doing the right thing? Right. And when you put that kind of pressure on somebody that like, I never pictured me going through that in my life. I was like, you know, this will be my marriage will last a long time. Things mm -hmm. are gonna be great. Right. No, you hit bumps in the road. Things happen. Yeah. I'm not used to not having control of a situation. So like, I'm oh, there's anxiety, there's pressure building. But yeah. how do I handle that? Mm. Well, I don't want my kids to look at me like, oh, well, daddy cracked under pressure. Like, no, I handle the pressure. I apply myself and ask myself, all right, what do you need to do better? Where do mm -hmm. you feel like you're lacking at? Mm. And kind of apply more attention there. Mm. You know, the, uh, they say, don't get so busy making a life. Like I try to use work as a distraction. Right. Realize, you know, I'm sacrificing time here. Mm -hmm. I want more time with my family. I want to, you know, see my kids grow up. So yeah. they, in a way I can say are like my saving grace mm -hmm. due to the fact that, you know what? I've got that constant reminder. Like, you know what? You're doing this for them too. Right. And they helped me find a courage in myself. That, like life goes on you know, make the best of it. Yeah. And right now I am living, I get to be the best Ron I can be and mm. the best father I can be. Like, and there's no, there's no compromising. Like my kids mean the world to me. And they're the reason, you know, I smile every day. Mm. You know, I know if, and I've seen it with my son, he's four, going on four years old. Mm -hmm. He'll see me and I'm just sitting there and I might, I might be in a funk. It's funny what people pick up on. Yeah. Oh, he come over, no reason. Gives me a big old hug. Daddy, I love you. And that little I hug and I love you mm. motivates me. Like, I could blast off to the moon if I wanted <laughs> yeah. to. You know, I could do anything. <laughs> motivated me exactly. just hearing that. Man, shoot. It's, and those are the things that we have to think about. Like, with depression, we got to think about what makes us happy. What can we apply to push ourselves to keep going? Yeah. Don't let that kind of stuff get the best of you. Mm. Don't let ego get the best of you because there's more to life than what you see every day yeah you know explore go through experiences mm -hmm. so that way you can learn and come up with the tools to battle things like depression anxiety any of that mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't hurt to go speak with somebody yeah like we were raised in a society where you know men in general were talking about your feelings was just wrong yeah right you just didn't do that it was something you didn't do right we got feelings too, and a lot of this stuff needs to be talked about because when you suppress it, what happens when you keep putting, you know, filling a bottle, filling a bottle, filling a bottle, or pouring something in a glass? It's gonna eventually, explode. it's going to overflow. It's going to explode. Yep. Stop it before it gets there, because mm. you never know what that breaking point will be for somebody. So stop it before you get gets there, and see how you can direct that energy yep. into other things. Because I mean, anxiety, depression, they're hella fire things to deal with. Yeah. You take people down a long, dark road. I've seen people come out in a rebirth like a phoenix or something, you know? Yeah. Take care. That's it. Yeah, you know? yeah. Mental health is serious. I it mean, is serious. Days. And uh, people do come out phoenix phoenixes, you know? Like, it's, um, it's like how gold is made right um it, it has to go into fire like you don't Definitely. know you don't know the flavor of what tea until it's put in hot water true indeed let's say a uh, pressure burst pipe so i can make diamonds there you go <laughs> we just what had like three or four cliches but that's yeah. okay <laughs> <laughs> they're all good um well you think about it when, they, when you talk about stuff like that you come up with these cliches they're there for a reason 
you know, it's it's yeah. been deemed as true. Yeah. It's true. I mean, I I was so happy and content. I was. I was actually very content with myself, which wasn't happening for about seven years when I finally got on stage and then I did it. I mean, I did it okay. I was It was mediocre, but I did it and I, I got some laughs. Your performance might have changed somebody's life and gave them the courage to go do it. Maybe. I don't know. I have no idea. But you may never know. But I, then, yeah. hey, eventually, somebody might be like, "Hey, that guy inspired me to do mm-hmm. something one day." You never know the impact that you have on people. Yeah, it's so true. You don't. Um, yeah. So no, that's really neat that you've been able to make an impact and really touch people's lives in your profession. I think it's awesome. You know, there's people that I may not even know I've impacted. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. you've got to go through that as a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Um, yeah, no, I was telling you before about like, you know, my classroom and being like a performer, I think, you know, it's kind of like my own little stage and I'm observing people constantly and I can see there's some people, they want to speak and they're a little quiet, more reserved and that's cool. I try to engage them in other ways, maybe more one-on-one, Nice. not like in lecture or something um, because yeah, you have like six people, five students who are very... Um, uh, loquacious. They're very talkative. Like they'll, they'll they'll raise their hand, you know, and just kind of uh, put it all out there. They don't care if they're wrong. And they're class clowns. That they're funny and and they're they're personalities. And that's great. We we need those individuals. But then there's a lot of people that are shy and they don't want to speak up. But they work really hard. They write very well. Um, they stay after class and ask you questions. And you can tell like some of them are really struggling. They want to put themselves out there. And I think for people like us. Like you'd said earlier, like you weren't comfortable speaking in No, oh, I wasn't, man. It was it took it took quite a bit for me to break out of that shell, you know. I yeah. For the most part, like there was a point in time in my life, yeah, I was fun, class clown. Mm. And then the class clown kind of went away. You know, I ch- you changed schools. Yeah. Uh I ended up going from middle school to high school. And in high school, I grew yeah, I went to school with the same people I grew up with, but things yeah. changed. There were so many new people I didn't know. Right. You know, I'm in classes with people I didn't know. It's nerve wracking. Really, exactly. A little scary. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so I ended up going to like a little show. Mm-hmm. I was a quiet kid, you know. Mm. And it took a buddy of mine one day, like, I'll probably say like my 10th, 11th grade year, he came mm. to me and was like, man, bro, you know, this girl over here like you, but she's like, no, oh, you might be corny. I was like, what? It's wrong, corny. I'm like, you know me. He's like, I know, man. I tried to tell her. Like, like tacky, corny? Yeah, like, like, oh, like, man. Oh, I'm like, man. You know, she, he was like, you know, you're being shy. You need to speak up. Yeah. That's when I went, you know, reached in my pocket, put that, put that battery back in my back and was like, all right, Ron, let's go. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I, it motivated me to be different, you know? So, mm. and he probably doesn't even know that conversation, like went into play and shaping who I am today. Like, it was like, <laughs> whoa, like, yeah. whoa, bring back that confident guy right. that we knew. Right. And, you know, that helped out a lot. Mm-hmm. Just putting yourself out there. Yeah. And it's, it goes back to what we were talking about, like courage, like yeah, and fear. Dig deep, find that in you. Yeah, you know, don't let the pressure of fear mm. break you. You know what? On the flip side, too, because there are some people that do let the fear paralyze them. And you know what? Like, I had parents that were together. They loved me. They put me in great uh, situations. And I know friends of mine that had a very different situation. And um, man, they were very timid in the classroom. They were awful yeah. to teachers. Terrible yeah. to oh, dude. Yeah. It was bad. You and know, I but I knew their background. Not that it was an excuse, but you kind of understood it. And like now that I'm, you know, I'm I'm 30, I'm a professional, and I'm I'm observing a lot of faces that remind me of faces that I saw 12 years ago. It's crazy, right? Yeah. Everything comes around full circle. Yeah. It's it's insane to think about the pressure that's on a lot of these students. Like I look back at people I went to school with, like, wow, yeah. you know, and, and I mean, I'm, like you're saying, like I see that currently with faces that I see in the barbershop. Yeah. And, you know, I've seen people who've changed to come a long way from that shell, that person in that shell that they used to be. Yeah. And then I've seen people who've gone downhill, you know, I try yeah. to myself personally, try to talk to them and excite that back in. I'm like, Hey, you know what? You can do more, you know, right. you get talking to people and it's always negative. Negative. Let me bring Always. some positive into you. Yeah. Man. If I can give you something that's going to help you believe in yourself and uplift yourself. Right. You know, I've had people do that for me. Mm-hmm. You know, some of my best friends, like, oh, Ron. Yeah. 
what happened? Like, you're not confident. Like, they helped me reinv- reinvigorate myself in the right. sense, like, whoa, mm-hmm. get back to me. Mm-hmm. Know yourself, get back to yourself, and, you know, be positive. Push other people to do better. Not everybody's going to be exactly what you want them to be. Yeah. That's fine. It's life. People yeah. are all different, different walks of life. People yeah. growing up, things change. Mm-hmm. Why not help motivate that change and push it to a positive direction? Yeah. Because you never know who you could be helping out. It's so true. And even with complete strangers, like you you see a very small sliver oh, yeah. of somebody's life, you know, like, and they come in and they're, like you said, they're negative, negative, negative. And, you know, I, I work with the college students. I, I work even with like young adults and um, our nonprofit organization. And it's like, they come in and they're so negative about themselves, where they are, just everything. You could be like, oh, no, it's a beautiful day out there. Like, yeah, but you know, it's going to like storm the next three. And it's like, well, <laughs> it's okay. Let me enjoy it while I got it, you know? Yeah. Like, we get so busy, caught up thinking about the future that we forget to take gratitude in the moment. Right. Soak it in, man. That yeah. sunshine hitting your face, let that feel good for them. It's true. Not thinking like, oh, it's going to rain right mm-hmm. tomorrow. Yeah. Who cares? You know what I... You're right. You, you know, maybe you've seen this. I, I've seen it at least like in the lecture halls. Um, when you take the time for somebody who is negative and pessimistic and you celebrate them, even a little bit in like a little bit, like something that they're accomplishing or something that they share with you that's like trivial, like, yeah, so, you know, I started talking with my dad again, or, you know, I, I kind of went back and resurrected a whole bunch of stuff with my mom. You're like, that's amazing. Exactly. Talk to me about that. That's great. They're almost all put. They're like, what? Somebody's listening to me? Exactly. Hey, man, sometimes it's all it takes is that one person to sit back and listen to you. I, it's, it's helped me out personally. Mm. Like I've gone to a counselor, you know. Really? I've been through some rocky relationships and, and things. And we're talking to people, like talking to a counselor. Mm-hmm. He told me, he says, Ron, I never met somebody that was just so self-aware as you. Mm. He's like, my job is to give you the tools to combat that. Yeah. And I mean, with what he's given me as far as like, you know, just talking to people, I'm able to bring positive Ron and put positivity on others because, you know, I want to see them do good. It's a, it's a genuine good feeling to see others do good, to want others to do good. Yeah. You know, I've been depressed. I don't want people to feel that. Right. So like, you know, you come to the shop, you sit with me, man. Those, that 30 minute, 45 minutes that you're sitting with me, I want that. If you're having a bad day, let me spend some positive on your day. Let's, mm-hmm. you know, uplift each other. That's, right. that's what you should do for other yeah. people. Like, even just complete strangers. Mm-hmm. That impact that you can have on them is life changing. You'd never know that impact either. And this, I'm no. sorry, I, this goes right back to what you were saying. Like, you don't know that impact you're going to have. On you getting outside of yourself a little bit, because it does help for you, by the way. Oh, it does. Of your depression, and anxiousness, insecurities, like going out of your way to kind of help somebody out or even just give a little compliment. And that doesn't take much at all, does it? No. And it sounds like, okay, but like people don't do it. I get oh. caught up. If I'm so busy, I have a checklist. I miss the beautiful things around me and the people around me all the time. I mean, like Even in the grocery store, walk past them, like, oh man. I like your shoes. Yeah. Something that simple. You, them shoes might have caught your eye. If you actually vocalize it, hey, I like your shoes. You made that person feel good about their purchase. Yeah. And changed their whole day. Like, yeah. Damn, you know, I might have been second guessing buying these. Right. Some, <laughs> some stranger just told me my shoes were great today. See? And that turned the trajectory of my day around. Exactly. Like something little like that. Mm. You, it could spark a whole bunch of changes. They may pay it forward a compliment to somebody else. Yeah. You've helped spread joy. You Let know that what? feel good. Spreading joy, feeling good. And I don't know. I, I gotta I gotta share with you what I was um kind of going on before what I was talking about. I uh I haven't thought about this in a couple of years, but again, we have a lot of fun in my class or you know, my lectures, and um I'm trying to like read the room. And I'm always and I remember this because my my dad, the way he runs his business, he owns a flooring installation company, right? Nice. And um he always took in a lot of people that were um, how do I say this, friends of the family, people mm-hmm. that he knew from high school that were struggling with like an addiction or struggling with, you know, a marriage or whatever. And everybody said no to them. My dad always brought them in. Nice. And he fed them and he helped them out. And I always saw that, like, I remember as a kid, you know, being like, oh man, some of these guys are rough. <laughs> these are some rough you know, guys. may have been giving them a chance that nobody else would. Right. And that, that helped shape and mold their lives totally different mm. than what could have been. Yeah. Yeah. 
a lot of a lot of people make mistakes and do things when all they ever really needed was a positive chance. And your father gave that to him. Yeah. That's a, that's an amazing person right there. Yeah. That was cool to see growing up because my, you know, my dad, I think always struggled with um, his level of education because he was the youngest child of like seven kids, uh, parents who spoke straight Spanish, worked three jobs, generational. And, you know, he was trying to stay in school, but like, you know, a family that big with so many things, he went into trade, made money. And um, I think he always kind of like was trying to navigate that. But yeah, one thing that I learned was just that giving second and third chances and helping those in need, like you said. And anyway, I, I'll never forget this, a student. So there was a couple of them that, that come to mind, but one, uh, there were two of them, uh, this boy and this girl, separate classes. And I always boosted them in class. They worked super hard, but they were quiet. They wouldn't raise their hand and talk, mm -hmm. you know, and um, worked super hard. Uh, they would write me letters or emails because they were so uncomfortable to come and talk to me face to face. Oh, wow. Wow. So they send an email or they, they, you know, whatever. And then finally I, I would engage them and say like, Hey, staff after class, you know, I'll help you out. I have some peer student peer tutors, whatever. And then, uh, they started to lighten up, you know, we have fun, we joke in the class and I'll never forget. I had, uh, um, the, the one student there, um, I'll, I'll say her name is joy. I'm just going to change okay. the name, but like <laughs> for confidentiality, uh, I'll say joy. So joy, um, she actually once in a while started to raise her hand because I was like, you need to read what you wrote. It's so good. It's the best in class. She goes, oh, no, it's not. I'm like, yes, it is. Oh, Given that little boat of confidence. And so then, then I realized that she was really strong in the sciences. And I heard about it. And I, I saw an email from a faculty member. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. So I made a huge announcement to the whole class and built it up. And was like, there is somebody in this classroom who's getting this award for this level of rigor in a science class and she was able to execute and i can see she's like oh no is he gonna say and i was like stand up and we all like applauded for her awesome. and it was great i saw a few boys that were like oh my gosh that's a big deal you know like some of the football guys right yeah. <laughs> and they were like that's awesome it's and most of them didn't even know her, her name i think she transferred schools okay so she didn't grow up with all these kids and this the last day of school i do my lecture I say to everybody, you know, hey, uh, you know, people are going to forget what you said. People are going to forget what you did, but people will never forget how uh, they, you made them feel. And you guys always made me feel like a million bucks every day I came in here. You can't put a number on that. I love all you guys. And we had a great moment. We ended class and I saw a note left on her desk. She left me a note, a little, little uh, post-it note. I still have it to this day. Oh, man. Awesome. And all she said was, um, thanks for noticing me. It just that changed her whole life. Man. All she said was, thanks uh, for noticing me. Imagine that. That's, that's, you've helped shape, mold this person, changed their life. It's wild. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was cool. It, it took that, you know, that it makes people feel special. Yeah. And you making that person feel special shaped their day. Thank you for noticing me, you know, like <laughs> something like that. That's impactful. <laughs> right? I, 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 it took me a while to wrap my head around it because I thought I was annoying her at times, not in a bad way, but just like, a, oh, am I doing too much? Make it, having everybody applaud her and she, I don't know, she's shy, but like, I, there's a fine line, sure. But I think that tension that I felt is because most people are, they don't want to talk to each other. They don't want to look each other in the eye. They don't want to get deep. They may be nervous. I mean, it, <laughs> there's, there's extenuating circumstances that come yeah, into that, yeah. but by you doing that, like, you spun it to a positive. Whatever negative that kept her from doing that before, yeah. you helped spin it to a positive. Mm. You've helped others celebrate her accomplishment, which mm. has got to be for her. Yeah. I mean, that award, like, oh, I feel good now. That's got to make her feel even better. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I it like was, that. It was a great moment, man. That was sweet. Yeah. I kept, that, that stuff keeps me in it, you know? I hear that. Like... I feel like more people should aspire to do things like that, to make others feel good. Yeah. Tell me that's not the truest sense of gratification you ever got. It's when the truest sense. Other, other people feel good, you feel good. It's true. When you can do that, you feel good. I mean, I forget who said it, but it's like, um, whatever you have not given away isn't really yours. Like when you get and you receive and you're able to like help, you know what I mean? Like I forget, I forget the lesson, but it's, um, 
it's when I teach Catcher in the Rye with JD Salinger. And, uh, you know, it's a good read. It's a good read. Good it's read. a fun read. Oh, yeah. A lot of kids like it because they, they like the language in it. So they're like, oh, cool. I'll read aloud. It's like, <laughs> all right, all right. Okay. Sensor filter. <laughs> but, um, anyway, one, one of the lines that we read about is, um, you know, the, the meaning of life is to find your gift, right? Definitely. The meaning of life is to find your gift. And then this second part is what got me. The purpose of life is to give that gift away. Definitely. Right? Definitely. Yeah. If, well, for me, my gift, hey, I found it. And mm -hmm. it took years to get there. I enjoy cutting hair. Yeah. And I'm going to give it to everybody I yep. can because along with that, like we talked about, it's the conversation piece. Yes. So not only am I just doing the haircut that physically, emotionally on that side will make you feel better. Yep. But then the conversations that we have, when I get to know you, we tap in on certain things. Yeah. I recently had a client of mine sat there and was like, Ron, I took your advice about going for this project that I wanted to do. And like, my man left his old job, started his own business and is doing better on his own than he had done previously. Wow. That made me feel good. Cause when he came back, I didn't know it. I didn't know any of this. Yeah. I hadn't seen him for a while. I popped back up. I was like, man, you know, I took your advice. I owe you a thank you. 100%. I was like, yo, if you ever need this from me, like I'm here for you. I'm like, wow. You know, like that made me feel good that this person like came back to me just to tell me that. And yeah. let me know, like, man, had it not been for your advice, I may not have, I may not have come out my shell and done this. So it was like a way, like I was saying before, like for me to pay my friend back from his advice, like, hey, oh man, I need to step it up. Okay, yeah, step yeah. it up. Go That's a big it. deal. You said something, and then he went and did it. Exactly. Like, like you were the catalyst for that. I'm happy I could be. You know, I'm happy. I'm. It makes me very happy that I could help somebody else out. Yeah. And all it cost me was a kind word. That's it. That's it. And honestly, it's not even just a kind word. You go beyond that because you develop a relationship. That's what, that's what that's what gets like like that's like the soil or the fertilizer so that the the plants can grow. Well, definitely, you, you know, know, when you in order to consider yourself a true friend, and I mean a true friend to anybody, yeah, your friend is going to tell you what you need to hear, whether it's good or bad for you. Yeah, and then, like a true friend will come to you and give you those kind of things. Mm. When we build these relationships, if you call me a friend, I'm going to be a friend, whether you like to hear it or not. I'm going to tell you. Yeah. Now it's up to you to do what you do with that information. Right. Uh, it can, and it can be something as simple as like, well, you know, I want to talk to this girl. If you're too scared to talk, I, hey, man, just go do it. What's, what's the worst you're going to hear? A no? Yeah. We can take a no. Yeah. You know? It, cause Failure's okay. Failure's okay. After so many no's. Like Michael Jordan, man, he went to high school in North Carolina. He went to Laney High down in mm -hmm. Wilmington, North Carolina. They cut him from the team. Yeah. <laughs> Guess and, what? And that that now he's the goat that dro that drove him. <laughs> it drove him. You he know, he had a passion, a fire because of that. Exactly that rejection right, you, know, you need. You nah, need that rejection. I remember going to that high school down really? there. Like my, I went to Southwest High School. We went down to that high school. I still remember. Like they got a little a shrine to that guy in there. Oh yeah. So it's crazy to it's see. A great like, story. You know, and all because he didn't take no for an answer. It's so true. You know, he let that no turn into something that pushed him. Like, I can mm -hmm. be better. Right. So, and that's what it is. Push yourself to do better. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. If, if you want something, go after it. Yep. You may need help along the way. Of course. Me being the person I am, if I can give anybody that help, I will. Yeah. Even if it's, you know, whether it be monetary, whether it be mm -hmm. my words. Yeah. We're put here to inspire each other. Totally. Uplift each other. And let's do it. Absolutely. I think that's the biggest thing is that. Just do it, get after it, do what you need to do and be driven. But at the same time, find people that you can have help catapult you in that direction. Yeah. Just, and it, just start, start going. Yeah. If it's an idea, take it, run with it. I know it. I know it. And so many people don't do it. They don't get into photography. They don't start painting. They don't start performing. They don't start doing a podcast. Like they don't do these things because they're like, oh, like I can never do that. What made you start the podcast? What pushed you to be like, you know what? I'm going to do this. Uh, yeah. I mean, when COVID-19 hit and school got canceled that first week, I was, I'm telling you, I said it earlier. I was out of sorts, man. And what, what happened was my wife was like, you need to do something you've always wanted to do. What is that? <laughs> first thing I'm like, <laughs> I joke. I treat my classroom like a podcast. I always say that, right? I have a word for my sponsors. 
and I put up a couple like memes or something funny. Oh, I love that. Get them laughing. I love that. Yeah. And then we have conversation. I interview students and we have a blast. And I, and she's like, then buy the equipment. And I'm like, really? And it took her support for sure to be like, that's something you're passionate about. If you've always wanted to do it. You're going to have a lot of time, right? In between grading and emails and everything else. Like, why not? So I bought the equipment. I got it going. I set it all up. And I'm going to be honest with you. This is the most fun I've had in years. My man, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> See? This has been a blast. Hey, who would have pictured it? Who, like, I know. Would you have pictured yourself like, oh, yeah, like I'm having this much fun? No. No, because I'd be stuck in the. a beautiful thing. I'd be stuck in the same schedule and the same rat wheel of I got to get the, you know what I mean? Like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, like, and you get up because our schedule, you get up super early and you're at school till late that you're doing this or I'm going across the street to the college and then you have bags under your eyes by oh, Thursday. Yeah. And then the weekend, you're just a zombie trying to recover. Then you go back into the next week. And then oh, yeah. our relationship's even tough because you're trying to find the balance, you know, like, okay, where do we set aside the time? Like, how do we do this? How do we do that? Like, we're figuring it out. And we don't even have kids yet. Of course. See. So we're always trying to figure out, you know what I'm saying, and navigate. And we've always done well, but man, like, it's it's been tough. This time that we've had to, and okay, listen, it's an awful time, like, with the economy, with health and people, like. 100%. But the silver lining is for us, we have just had a terrific, terrific time of just, like you said, creativity. Exactly. Me personally, like I even look at it like COVID-19, yes, mm -hmm. it's it's messed up a lot. Yeah, yeah. But it's also been a shift in the universe that has got people thinking outside of the box, doing different than normal. Like, yeah. Say one day we'll have the machines come in and automate everything. One thing yeah. they can't automate is our creativity. Yeah. Your mind, your thought process, your your unique individuality. Mm -hmm. And you get to put that out there. You mm -hmm. get to find that part of you that you haven't put on display. You get to do it now. Yeah. And it feels good doing it. It does. You know? And to have your wife support, awesome. It is. Like, amazing. It, it really is. Keep it going. Yeah. Keep it going. No, it's just been incredible. And she, she's she been like working on the filming stuff. I've been able to film her, do some like mini TED Talks psych things for her kids. And it's been, it's, it's, yeah, it's been stretching. It's been interesting. Like the first time I did the podcast, it was just me. I wasn't doing interviews yet. A couple mm. weeks ago. It was just me talking like a narrative, like, Hey, so uh, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. Thanks for click and play. That's a huge win. I'm like, what the, that doesn't sound like me. <laughs> I sound like that awkward, like, you know, neighbor that's like, hey, man, you know, Mr. Smith or whatever. Oh, like, yeah. hey, how you doing? Okay, all right. They don't really have a conversation with you. Like, that was literally what it was. I'm like, I, I don't know what who that is, but that's not Jordan Hernandez. Um, so then I'm like, back to the drawing board. I got to do interviews. I love talking with people. I there like hearing go. their stories. And here we go, you know? I like that. I like that. It's, a, it's been a blessing in disguise. Yes, financially or economically, it might have messed things up. Totally. But when you come back and you look at an individual, they've I, I think nine out of 10 people have discovered something in themselves yeah. that whether it be something about doing for others or finding something that you know they've enjoyed that mm. they haven't I had a chance to do. Yep. I started painting again. Like, yeah. I haven't done that since I was a kid. I was like, oh, let me just have some fun. Tell like, me about that. Artistic expression. Uh, you know, I've been playing around, listening to music. And I was like, you know what? Ordered some headphones online. They came in. I was like, man, I'm mm. paint. I went and got canvases, different acrylic paints. I got a couple friends of mine that are painters. Oh, that's and I'm awesome. just like, I saw them. I'm like, man, you know what? I want to try it. Got and your Bob been, Ross on, right? Bob a Ross. Bit, a little bit. And I, I tried going to the store, like, you know, even looking for paintings to hang up on my walls, like just yeah. as home decor that I liked. Yeah. And I couldn't find anything that meshed my personality. Mm. So I created my own. Mm. And I, I got my kids involved. So it's like, it's become a family project that like, it's something I enjoy doing. Yeah. They're having fun doing yeah. it. And we're decorating the house with it. So yeah. it's cool. Man. You know, listen, this is the thing. And with the creative types, right? And not everybody's like actually creative. We all have different levels of it. It's like saying oh, exactly. everybody, it's like saying, oh yeah, we're all just super smart. It's like, well, I'm never going to be a neurosurgeon, you know? But there's something else that you can do that neurosurgeon can. Right. It's just a different smart. Exactly. But to say that creative thing, I was just reading the other, um, it was in the New York Times, they had an article out. And it was for the for the creative types when they aren't producing and creating artistically, they they get into a funk. Oh yeah, going in like a retrograde period, man. Mm -hmm. it, I've been there. 
Yeah. Like I, I get like that when I'm not cutting hair. You can imagine me like, yeah. oh, I'm on quarantine. Like, oh, I got to cut hair. Gotta right. Cut hair. Cause every haircut's different. Exactly. There's an art to it. And even like you were saying with my colics and stuff back here, like, cause the hair grows a different, it's like DNA and fingerprints. Exactly. Nobody else is, nobody else's hair grows like your hair. It might right. be similar, but that's your own pattern. And then you figure that out in real time. Well, by the way, I never even thought of this. Like you're also like trying to entertain conversations and like dig deep with people and you're still like focusing. Oh, it's all on the fly. That's crazy. <laughs> I couldn't do that. Multitasking. I can't cook and talk at the same time. Really? Yeah. I tell Sam, okay, quiet. I'm like trying to figure out the, like what I'm doing. Well, that's like me in the car when I'm backing up, Super man. Focused. You know, I got to turn the radio off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> even if it's the backup camera, like volume down, I'm looking at street volume signs, down. I'm driving, you know. Dude, I, I, <laughs> I just said. Totally off topic. I saw the other day like this beam or it was a gif. It was like when, when I'm looking for like an address and I turn the music down and I go. Yeah, like it's going to help you count. <laughs> it doesn't help. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. help. Uh, psychologically, it does. It I doesn't help that. my I, sight. I, I, to I, just need like, I need that clarity in my head to be like, all right, this is this. You know? So funny. <laughs> um, man, good stuff. Hey, let's end with this. Let's end on a good note. What's... um. What's uh, like one thing that you've realized or or had happen? Something meaningful, something cool um, over this this little uh, period, this season of COVID nineteen that you can share? Man, you know, like I mentioned before, man, I'm big on family time. I'm big on my kids, mm. and something that I have come to realize is that man, people are such a rush. Yeah, we need to take our time and enjoy these things. Yeah. Right now, with everybody being out of work, you know what? Whether it be the fact that you wake up every day, the mm -hmm. fact that you've got sunshine, you know, coming through your window in the morning, the mm -hmm. fact that you know you got a family that's there, and you get to spend time with them. Embrace it and enjoy it. Mm. Quit being in such a rush. Yeah. Let life take its course. Take things one day at a time, and enjoy it. Just really enjoy it. Soak it in and enjoy it. Walk with a smile on your face. There's a lot to be happy about out yeah. here. Getting caught up in the rat race of everyday life, we don't realize. It's true. Do that. Like from, and I'm going to speak specifically about the Delray community mm -hmm. from what I've seen there is like, you know, I know there's a bunch of Facebook books or Facebook groups going on that have impacted the local area for like small businesses, mom and pop places in the community coming out and supporting them. Mm. I love that. Yeah. You know, and previously we didn't have the opportunity to do it like that, but you see like, it's true. People enjoying life. Yeah. Take this time and enjoy your life right now. If you can, don't get caught up in the rat race. Oh, I got to work. I got bills. Yeah. You'll get it done. Yeah. You're getting through it now. It's true. So realize that, you know, your self-worth, the potential is in yourself. Take some time and enjoy your life. Enjoy the people around you and inspire others if you can. Yeah, I like that a lot. It's it's something that like, ah, you know, at the first, I'm like, ah, you know, I'm just going to stay in the house. You know, people need you, man. Go yeah. out there and support your, your fellow man. It's true. It's true. And with uh, with that being said, I uh, just want to say Ron Black of Lanzetta's uh, Barbershop here in Delray Beach, South Florida. Thank you so much for uh, coming on the show. I appreciate you having me out, this brother. This is great, man. Be and good. Th and thanks for the haircut. Oh, always. Always, <laughs> man. My pleasure. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time. <laughs>